I'll never forget the first time I used kick. It happened a couple of days ago when all my friends made a plan to bring their girlfriends to a fancy restaurant for dinner. I figured since I didn't have a girlfriend and didn't have much going on, I told one of my friends that I wasn't going. He insisted that I use and download this app called Kick, and he said I'd surely find someone on the app. I downloaded Kick a couple of hours later and set up my profile. I spent a while choosing a good picture of me so I can catch people's attention. I didn't have any experience with this app before though. It insisted me to go and chat with people in the public groups. I chose one group which was made for single people to talk with a random person and float with them. There were both males and females in this group. Now at the time I didn't know most of the female accounts were fake and were used by hackers and scammers. Anyway there was this one girl named Emma. She was one of the group members too and she asked to chat with me privately. I agreed. We talked and she seems like the type of person who gets straight to the point. I felt like I had just found someone and I told my friends that I would be coming with a girl too. She asked me to meet her alone first so that we can get to know each other more and I agreed, not thinking much of us. She sent me her location on my messages and said that's where she lives. It was literally in the middle of nowhere and as far as I knew, that area It was full of tall grass and trees. I didn't care though, I just told her that we'd meet there that evening. Later, I drove down to the other side of town and got on this long road. After a good 10 minute drive on this road, I found myself at some scary looking spot. You know, tall grass and trees everywhere, yet no sign of a building or a house. Then at a distance, I saw a car parked on the side of the road. That's when I looked at my phone and realized that this was my destination. I parked behind the car, which was a Ford Explorer. Then I got out of my car just to see if there was someone in the car next to me. It was empty. At this point, I knew that this was just a trap. Then I got a text message saying, Hey, is that you? Come here on your left, we'll just have some fun real quick. When I looked left, I saw a phone screen glowing in the tall grass. That's it, I said to myself. I went back to my car and I opened up my phone camera to capture the license plate number. As I did this, I saw a tall man jump out of the tall grass and run towards me. Thankfully, my car was already on, and I drove away before he even got close. I got back to town, and I was thinking about reporting that kick ID to the cops. But then I realized that he had already deleted his accounts. So now I had no evidence to prove that this incident even happened. I deleted my kick account as well, and I will never use the app again. Who knows what that man wanted to do to me. I've been using Kick for 3 years and this happened in 2016 when I was trying match and chat. It was a web page made by Kick, very similar to Tinder, where you swipe pictures of guys and girls and like and dislike them. Once liked, if the person likes you back, you get a notification saying that you have a match. Anyway, long story short, I woke up and realised that I had a match on Kick. Her name was Laura and she was very good looking. We started talking and eventually she asked me to come over to her place. I agreed within seconds and she sent me her address. She told me to come over at 11.30pm when her parents wouldn't be home. She was 3 miles away from my house which wasn't bad at all. So far things were going smoothly. I left at 11.15 and was there by 1130 The house looked so creepy and so abandoned that I didn't even want to get out of my car and look around our property. Only one room upstairs had lights on. I didn't find it weird though as she had told me that her parents were out of the city and she would be home alone. 
I texted her saying that I was outside, but she didn't respond. So I decided to get back into my car and give three honks to let her know that I was outside. As soon as I honked, the lights turned off and I suddenly felt a vibration in my pocket. It was a text from her. She said, Hey, was that you honking? I replied, Yeah. And she said, Okay, the door's unlocked. Let yourself in and go upstairs. That's where I'll be waiting for you. My heart sank when I read this. I looked up and noticed a figure staring at me from the window. I ran back to my car, made a U-turn and drove away from that place. On the way home, I started getting messages saying, Hey, where did you go? Why did you go? Come back, please. I didn't open the texts until I got home. The most disturbing text said, There's no escape for me, boy. I know what you look like, and I know where you live. See you soon. I blocked whoever it was and told myself to never trust anyone using Kick again, since it's mostly used by predators anyway. I still use Kick, but just to pass the time. Last month, I was at my friend's house for a sleepover. For her safety, I'll call my friend Kate. She is much more of the social media girl than I am. She introduced me to Reddit and finally got me to make an Instagram account not very long ago. On the other hand, she has an account on every site I've heard of. Tumblr, Reddit, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat and so on and she even has Kick and most likely other messaging apps. She constantly goes online and finds people to talk to. She even once had a boyfriend who lived in the UK. It didn't last long. The night started out okay. We were messing around with face masks and using each other's makeup. The usual for us. She's always trying to get me to be more girly. Pull my head out of my box, she says. We had ordered pizza and were chilling on our beds. She was, of course, scrolling through one of her sites and messaging someone. And I was going through her expensive makeup and nail polish collections, when my head suddenly snapped up. I felt like I had either heard something or felt someone looking at me. I found myself staring at the window, so I got up and walked over to look out of it. It was still daylight, so I saw very clearly a man standing across the street. He must have seen me because he quickly ducked behind a car, then a moment later ran down the street. Kate asked me what I was doing, so I told her what I had just seen. Of course, she didn't believe me and told me to stop trying to scare her. I figured that man could have been doing anything, so I tried to forget about us. Sometime later, Kate said something about the guy she was kicking being a creep. I thought it was kind of weird because I knew she was messaging a guy she had found a few months ago and she had really liked him. For this story, I'll be calling him Mike. When I asked what she meant, she said that he kept saying that she was clean and needed to be protected. And more than once, he said that he would come over to her house. I agreed that that was really freaky and told her to block him, which she did. As it got later and darker, Kate got more and more unnerved by her messages. It was clear that she was trying not to show it, but I had known her for too long to not be able to tell. After my fifth or sixth time asking her what was bothering her, she finally told me. She said that an hour after she blocked Mike, a new account messaged her asking why she stopped talking to him, and when she asked him what he was talking about, he said it was Mike and that he just wanted to be her friend. This really freaked Case out, but she didn't want to upset him, so she said it was an accident and they moved on. Here she showed me the messages. Pretty soon he got creepy again, 
same stuff about her beauty being too good for little boys to touch and eventually he said that he would hurt boys who tried to take her away. After that Kate blocked him again but she kept getting messages from new accounts and they got angrier and angrier the more times Kate blocked them. Just when Kate put her phone down from showing me the messages she got another one. It only said I know where you live. We could only stare at it in shock. After a few moments, another message came in. It said, I'll protect you from them. I told Kate to tell her parents. She said no, like I expected. Her parents don't like her messaging people from the internet. They're very controlling and would take any excuse to yell at her or her brother. I tried to convince her that that didn't matter. If this guy has her address, this could get bad really quick. But she wouldn't give in. She said that her parents would probably take her phone away and yell at her. And I knew she was right. It was a slim chance they would have done anything. But I still felt like something awful was going to happen. She got a few other messages during our argument along the lines of Why aren't you answering? And you need me to protect you from them. But eventually the messages stopped and we put in a movie to distract ourselves. It was 2 in the morning when we started to drift off finally, the crazy messages far from our minds. When a loud bang woke us up. Kate screamed and I tried to find the source. Then it happened again. Someone was throwing rocks at Kate's window. Kate's parents, awoken by all the noise, were yelling down the hall. Kate went and told them that someone was throwing rocks at the house. While I was alone in Kate's room, I went to her window and saw what I believed to be the same man as earlier in the day. The man took off running when I heard the front door open. Once everything quieted down and Kate's parents were back in their rooms, Kate and I went back upstairs. Kate picked up her phone from the bed and then gasped and dropped it. She had new messages. Let me in. Let me in. As we stared down at her phone, it went off again. A picture of her house. Good night, Kate. We didn't get to sleep that night. Since that night, Kate has continuously felt like she's been watched and swears she thought someone is following her. She still gets messages saying that she needs protection from them. I'm still urging her to tell her parents, but she still won't. I don't think she'll tell anyone unless things escalate.